T test. Last time we did a T test, and um, uh, but I'm aware not everyone on this may have may have seen that. And I also want to go into the different types of T tests because it's one thing to know there's a T test. It's it's another to to get into whether it's a one tailed or two tailed and an unpaired versus a paired um, T test. So here's the formula I've written out that you all can use in um, in your your Google Sheets, and this would work in Excel as well. Um, but let's just go into this. And so here we're trying to see, did the students grow? Did they increase from the pretest to the post-test, right? That's our initial, maybe our initial question. And so we go in here, perhaps really excited to try the t-test formula. And you hit equals t test and it pops up there. And you click it, ask for range one. So we're gonna highlight that area. Now this is a trick, it doesn't really tell you, but you wanna hit a comma. And then range two, hit a comma. Now it says tails two. Um, and, it's, and you're not sure, and maybe you just think, you know what, let's just say two, cause that's what I've heard I should do. And for the type, Last time I actually said, let's just go with three. Um, there are, you can always click if you're confused, you can click on learn more about the t-test and it will open up some additional things. Um, but there's basically three choices here. One is uh, that it is a paired t-test and I'll go into that in a second. Two is that it is unpaired, but unequal, uh, sorry, equal variance. And then three is that it is unpaired but unequal variance. Anyway, just bear with me. If you were to do three and you hit that, um, alpha equals 0 0.05. So, in this case, the p-value is greater than alpha and we fail. And we are sad because we did this really cool thing with our students and we thought it would work. And then we conclude it didn't work because it doesn't seem they grew. But that would be an incorrect uh, assumption. And also, um, this isn't a, a, you know, I wanna say that if we scratch the, the surface with stats, it can do what we call, you know, making people you know, a little bit dangerous because you can misinterpret things. You, you start to think you know some stats. So always be finding, um, and I think Katie or, or was gonna make this point, but find a stats buddy to check things and make sure you're doing the right stats and you're not doing something wrong. Cause um, a lot of people see this a P value and they just assume you, you know exactly what you did here, right? Um, let's go back though here. Um, I just wanna show you. So one-tailed versus two-tailed. I've put out this, this kind of hopefully handy uh, table and you wanna use a one-tailed test if you specifically think one group is going to be bigger than the other. Like if you think the post-test is bigger than the pre-test. You wanna use a two-tailed test when you think Either group A could be bigger than group B or group B could be group bigger than group A. It doesn't matter to you um, which is bigger. You just think one is gonna be bigger. So that is the difference between one and two tailed tests. And it's called tailed because it has to get, it, it gets into those normal distribution curves that I was showing you that people say that bottom part of the bell looks like tails, right? Um, so let's go back to the stats. And here the formula is always up here at the top. So I can change some things here. So our p-value was 0.23. And I'm gonna just change this to one-tailed instead of two-tailed. And let's see what happens to our p-value. It got much lower. In fact, it was exactly halved. Um, when you go from a two-tailed, specifying it as two-tailed versus one-tailed, it will half your probability and your p-value. 
And it's because you're only looking at one direction and change. You think these are gonna be higher than these, okay? But there's still another thing we should do here, which is paired versus unpaired. So use a paired test when each row in two columns of data are linked in some way. That is, they're from the same location or they're the same subject or the same date. Um, in this case, case, they're the same subject. They're the same students, right? So that makes sense to use a paired t-test because those rows are not independent of each other. Whereas an unpaired t-test is when each row is not related. Like you could scramble up all the data uh, in either column and it wouldn't matter um, because each point is independent. So let's look back at this. Um, in this case, you know, if you look at Maggie, she went from 83 to 85. She increased by two points and Ruby increased by two. And you could go down and look at this. And you know what? Most of these students, Carla, unfortunately, but most of these students increased. And so a paired t-test takes that into account. It looks at the difference between these because they are paired. So if we go in here and we drop this and we're gonna change number three, which was previously unpaired, we're gonna change it to paired. And oh my goodness, yay, <laughs> 0 0.01. So look at that, that is lower. Of course I set all this up, but, um, but that would be so exciting, right? To see that using the correct statistical method can make a huge difference in your results and knowing how you set it all up is 